I've got a smallmouth bass that I brought from my shop here. It's all ready to go. Pre-production head. One of my cast heads on it, you're right. Skin mount body. And we're gonna be painting that up today. All right, I like, can't wait to see it. How do you install that head under that body? It's simple, it's just like doing any other tr uh, trout or salmon head that you're used to doing. Um, and you can see we've, we've done a video on that earlier. It's skin mounting rainbow trout and we show how to do that, to how to adjust the head, fit the body, put the foaming agent in there and attach the head. It's all solid as a rock. Yep, solid as a rock, but lightweight and not, no mm -hmm. uh, weight in there to offset yeah, and your the And your epoxy here ties from your head to your skin mount? Yep, that's your magic sculpt in there. And I use just a scale roller with the compression on it. Uh, this is, I believe, the smaller size of the rollers to imitate the smallmouth scales. Fins here, we've got really nice fins on this fish, no splits, no tears. But I uh, still did some backing on them here. I'll explain this to you. This is material I used on here is Tough Fin. It's a Lifetone product. Uh, it's really good. I put three coats on here total. I put the first coat on after decarding my fins. And then I will go and back the fins on my fish like this that have weak tips with the fin tape, the clear plastic fin tape. Put it on all the back sides here. And then I give another coat of Tough Fin. And then I take a torch, propane torch or a lighter. Heat it up very gently and burn back the edges. Shape it with my finger to keep it from curling when it's hot. And get yourself a nice natural looking fin. And the next thing we have to do is blend in this cast head into the skin here. We need to uh, imitate this color back onto the head. It makes it easier to paint if we get everything uniform. And this is a typical smallmouth bass. It's dried really dark. Uh, it doesn't seem like no matter where you go, they always dry like this. We're going to be lightening up the fish, but I find it's easier if we darken the head down first to match the body and the skin tones, and then bring it all back together on a light phase to paint. Um, you can see this is kind of a dark black. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of towel, take my black, my polytransport black lacquer, and put some on the towel here. It's nothing too complicated. I'm just going to basically just rub it on here. And we're going to buff this off, but this is going to soak into the pores here and the detail of the head. Okay, we've got our fish dried on the head now with the paint. We're going to take our little scratch pad here and I'm going to apply some pressure and buff off that black paint that we just put on there. And you'll see as I do, that it's picking up the detail in the head. Okay, we got our fish ready to start putting our markings on. We've got our reference out here. And with smallmouth, they have a lot of vertical bandings, bars on them. Uh, reference is a must for this. Some have wide, some have narrow. And as you can see, I took my paint holder off the back. We're going to do both sides on the fish here. And there's uh, a couple ways we can do this. I've got some fine fabric here to do some fine spots. But for the most of the bars here, I'm going to use this brush. I've got two colors here. I've got black and I've got dark green. And I'm going to check the dark green here first and see how I like it showing up on this fish versus the black. And I'm going to start on the back here just for fun to see how I, yeah, it's, it's dark enough. So I think what we'll do is we'll use the dark green for our vertical bandings on this fish. And I'm going to start with the head. <coughs> start with the, the eye stripe. What's nice about this brush is it patterns are at random and they're all different. You can control them just by the amount of pressure on the brush. Start on the verticals and they tend to be separated so we're just I'm gonna kinda eyeball here. I'm gonna pick a spot here first and start my first one. As I go I can make it a little fatter as I want. 
I'm going to work big to small on these markings. And this is a really good technique to use. You get a really nice looking natural looking mark on your fish. And we just continue on down. Now I'm going to go back, observe my reference here. And usually what we've got is broken other patterns in between them here. Some of the fish markings will go right down into the belly. Some won't. That's a local preference. You can decide how you like your fish. And I'm going to go to my scale tipping next. And these are my Shiva paint sticks that I like to use. Just recut the top because they self seal each time you're done with them. I'm going to scale tip this whole fish. It's quick, simple, and easy. I do this in all my, all my skin mounts. This is an antique gold. I hold it in my right hand, rub my finger across it, pick up the pigments. Just gently start rubbing it on here. And you can see, as soon as it touches that scale detail, we're picking it up. And we're going to do the whole fish real simple with this. And we're going to start working these in between the bandings. For the time being, I'm going to just work it in between here and then I'm going to go back and then fade it in. But I want to bring these, the sides more out to the attention here. So, okay, now we're going to go to the eyes. And that particular head takes 12 millimeter. We're going to take the flex size here and we're going to trim off this little edge that they usually come with. Mix up some uh, magic sculpt here on the break, a little bit, pea sized piece for each one. Just going to press it right in the center. We've got our eye. That are ready to set the eyes here. I'm going to take the first one, line it up, make sure the black pupil is pointing forward. Squeeze it in there. Okay, we've got our smallmouth in hand. We've got some gills ready to install. And as you can see, we do have an open gill on these cast heads. And you can see the foam that was used for attachment. And there we want to add some gill. It doesn't take much. I buy these little chenille bumps in different sizes, pre-cut them, test fit them, put them in there. Doesn't take much to slide them in. My little tool here, adjust them. Take one from the other side. They fit right up in there real nice. And they, they do surprisingly well. The customer is just going to look up in there once and see some red and, and be happy with it. And you're not going to see it from your show site anyway, but if the customer does look back up in there, you've got some nice looking gills for them to look at. And I like to put a final little set of super glue on them here. Just put a drip at the top. A drip at the bottom. We're pretty much done with it, but I want to show you one last alternative here. I'm going to put it next to another small mouth that I did a while back that has Envirotex light that's brushed onto it. It's a two part epoxy gloss. It's the gloss that takes your fish to a next level for depthness of uh, paint and shine and everything. I prefer it myself. So I will probably I will gloss these when I get them back to my shop with my heavier gloss. Uh, it's real simple to do. You can just follow instructions on the label. Um, I take my fish painting stand in my shop, put the fish on it, set up some newspaper to catch the drips, mix it up, paint it on. You have to hand rotate it uh, every five, ten minutes for the first couple hours so it drips off. But it's well worth the effort. 
Uh, I make a, a point of putting it on almost every mount I do. It really brings out the colors and gives your fish that really ultimate wet look gloss. And you can see the comparison between the two. But for just quick, good commercial work, there's nothing wrong with your spray-on gloss. But if you want the extra mile, use some Envirotex Light.